Is toxic narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder always caused by bad parenting? Is it possible that a person who was raised by healthy, loving parents in a good, decent home could still become a narcissist? Well, if you're in any way related to or otherwise involved with a narcissist, you've probably asked yourself at one time or another how they got that way, right? What made them a narcissist? How did they get like this? And if you're like me, you probably needed to know in order to heal. So you got busy and you did your research and you found out that in most cases, it's related to their parents and sadly most often to their mothers or primary caregivers and their attachment styles. That's why when you think of any narcissist, the very first thing that likely goes through your mind is how badly their parents mess them up, right? Well, because of the fact that most narcissists seem to stop developing emotionally when they are toddlers or at best middle schoolers, and because most research points to the fact that their parents didn't give them the proper kind of love and attention they needed in order to evolve, which led to their emotional immaturity, it's easy to blame mothers or parents in general. But if you are the parent or the sibling of someone who might be a narcissist, and you know for sure that those issues don't apply to them, well, you might doubt this theory and you might find yourself digging for an alternative possibility. And what about those families that have more than one child and only one of the kids turns out to be a toxic narcissist? Or what about people who had good families and who didn't suffer any trauma in childhood? How did they become narcissists. You want to know if it's always the fault of the parents, right? Well, that's what I'm here for. Let's talk about it. Are parents always at fault when someone develops narcissistic traits? Even though more often than not, narcissism is the result of the fact that those who turned out the way they did were neglected or abused by their parents, that's not always the situation. Published research studies tell us that the area of the brain that controls emotional empathy and compassion is thinner in those who have been diagnosed with NPD than in those who haven't. So neurology, as well as genetic predisposition, is going to have an effect on how a person's personality turns out, as does environment, of course. And then you have situations where th they had parents who really did their absolute best to raise their children right, but due to other circumstances like their jobs or various responsibilities, they inadvertently neglect the child's emotional needs, which leads to their child developing a narcissistic personality. In those cases, they might have been fed and clothed well and taken care of when they're sick, and they might even have all the material things in the world or not, but their parents maybe didn't give them the sort of love and attention that they felt they needed. Of course, in these cases, the parents were generally not in any way abusive. It might have been due to the fact that they had other kids or they had a sick parent they also needed to take care of, or they had a demanding job that was just necessary to support the family. Of course, there are also times when narcissists end up becoming that way because their parents are just a little bit too indulgent, let's say. In fact, a 2015 study points out the fact that some parents who might have overly praised their kids when they might not have deserved it or have always focused on how much better their own kids were than other kids, and then in some cases, they might have simply given too much attention and indulgence and not enough discipline, which would lead to narcissism. In fact, loving your child is healthy and good, says Brad Bushman, a study author and psychology at Ohio State University. He says, but thinking that your child is better than other children, it could lead to narcissism and there's nothing healthy about narcissism. In these situations, kids will often develop sort of an overblown sense of entitlement, which they then carry into adulthood. In many cases, they were also not required to show empathy growing up, nor were they ever asked to check their egos at the door. This can happen in a number of situations. For example, it might be reported with only children. But please note, this isn't always the case, and in fact, it is relatively rare. In some cases though, definitely not all, it can be a bigger issue when parents have struggled to get pregnant or when they have adopted after a long struggle with infertility. It might also happen when a child is born prematurely or has other issues that cause their parents to fear for their lives, among other things. And then of course, in both the case of the adopted child who's older than a newborn, at the time of adoption and in the case of the premature or otherwise ill child who spends weeks or months in the hospital after birth, their attachment styles can be affected. That's because parents aren't able to connect on the same level at that really critical time as they normally would and so they develop a less healthy attachment style which goes back to the original theory of attachment style predicting narcissism. Sometimes though, people become narcissistic and it has nothing to do with the parents at all. For example, if a child was ruthlessly bullied at school or if someone else in their lives caused trauma for them in some way. In these cases, while the parents could have been loving, caring, amazing, awesome people, the trauma the child experienced at the hands of these bullies or other outsiders might certainly also have been a risk factor in them becoming narcissistic. And then there are those who end up with something we call acquired situational narcissism. 
narcissism. What is that? Well, we know that it might be possible that someone who was raised in a relatively healthy home by decent parents, but who had other traumas and issues could become a narcissist, right? And if that's the case, what other types of situations and factors can play into it? Let's talk about the research on acquired situational narcissism. So back in 1996, there was some research published that pointed to a certain condition that was referred to as transient or temporary or even short-term narcissism. And even before that, psychologists often recognized something they called reactive narcissistic regression, which meant that when someone was dealing with a big life crisis, they might kind of go through a sort of temporary narcissistic phase. And during that time, they would behave like a toxic narcissist until the crisis was over, as in they wouldn't be able to care about anyone else's feelings, etc. And according to what I found in this and other published research papers, these types of temporary narcissism can also be triggered by medical conditions and even injuries. For example, a traumatic brain injury or TBI, it has often been linked to narcissistic and antisocial behaviors in people who had not previously displayed them. So how do you identify someone with acquired situational narcissism? Well, obviously you're not gonna be able to diagnose anyone, but let's talk about what it looks like in real life, shall we? Do you know anyone who is usually pretty humble, but suddenly they ended up getting a big high paying job or they suddenly making a lot of money or they ended up becoming a celebrity out of the blue. In these situations, many people are able to keep their heads on totally straight and it's awesome, but some kind of lose their humility. In fact, according to Robert B. Millman, a professor of psychiatry at Cornell Medical School, this is what acquired situational narcissism looks like. He points to known narcissists who are among the billionaires or people who become suddenly famous or who manage to rise to aspirations levels in their career and they develop narcissism in adulthood. He adds that celebrities and other suddenly wealthy people will often have lives that are just totally different than what normal people live, something we don't consider typical. Plus they might also be surrounded by yes people or yes men who will ensure that they're given sort of filtered feedback, a lot of admiration, and they're never told no for any reason. Plus anytime someone is a celebrity or a CEO or otherwise wealthy, they might be sought after in ways that would cause them to feel you know, more important and better than other people. All of this is narcissistic supply on steroids if you think about it. And hey, let's not forget celebrities and other public figures might feel a certain amount of pressure from the public, fans and haters alike, to present a certain image and to live a certain lifestyle. A good example of this might be that guy you grew up with who was kind of a nerd and nobody really liked him and he was picked on, right? But he grew up and he invented some big app or wrote a TV show or got a famous YouTube channel or whatever and now he's famous or at least he's rich. Maybe he became an actor or a singer or anyway, he found himself a celebrity, let's say. In any case, this formerly geeky guy managed to find success to the point that he started to be recognized in public or he suddenly became a member of the social elite for whatever reason. Well, as soon as he found himself kind of outgrowing that geeky quiet image, what did he do? He suddenly felt like a whole new person. You were so happy for him, right? Maybe he went a little overboard though. And maybe he started to focus a little too much on how he looked and on his own needs and his own wants. And this, along with the fact that his life is the one I described earlier, very different than the average person, as all lives of public figures will be, well, it might cause him to lose any sense of compassion and emotional empathy that he wants had. That might lead him to being unconcerned with the little people to the point that he would end up inadvertently or directly abusing the people closest to him without remorse. So while he may not have become a narcissist as a child, he would still essentially have developed that narcissism in the same way as any other narcissist, but as an adult. But why does this happen to some people and not others? Well, according to Millman, while it's possible to develop narcissism in adulthood for the reasons we just talked about, among others, acquired situational narcissism is most likely to happen where there are already some pre-existing factors that would have already led to narcissism under the right circumstances. So all of this means that, at least in some cases, narcissism can be developed by people who had good healthy upbringings and that it is not, in fact, always the fault of the parents. If you're interested in learning about how to deal with a narcissist personally, take a look at the playlist I'm going to leave for you right there and in the pinned comment. What do you think about all that? Well, this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, what do you think about all of this? Do you know someone with acquired situational narcissism? Do you have a child with narcissism or do you know someone else who was raised in a beautiful, happy home and they didn't get abused or traumatized in any way? And does this video offer you any clarity? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below, and let's talk about it. If you have more questions about acquired situational narcissism or anything else regarding this particular topic, please let me know in the comments below and I'll make you a future video. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life, and hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Now, before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm gonna leave for you right there and right there, and while you're here, hit the subscribe button right there so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.